What's up? I'm your host, RC Scepter562. I think. No. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Mr. Scepterstein, also known as RC Scepter5665, also known as Scepter5665, also known as a plethora of other things. Uh, welcome back to Let's Play Montezuma's Return. Uh, I have a couple of things to explain before we get into this too much, so please bear with me the fact that I'm not going to play straight away and the fact that you're going to sit here and listen to me talk at the menu screen because I'm not actually interacting with you right this particular moment. So let me just ex explain a couple of things. First, I'm back! Yay! That's all over and done with. The second thing that I would like to discuss is the fact that why am I doing this again? Well, if you'd like to listen to me so inclinedly, you might notice the fact that I said something in the previous Let's Play, which I am leaving up. If you follow this channel for a long enough time, you'll know that I already did a Let's Play of this game, but I never finished it. I got to this level right here, called Angry Aztec, and I never got past it. I completed it, but I never finished the final three levels, and I never showed them off. So, we're going to be doing that this time around. However, I want to go through the game again a second time, revisiting it. Because, the first time, I mentioned that I couldn't record menus. Well, look at what I'm sitting on. I'm sitting on a menu. The menu of this particular version of the game. Which, the Abandonware version, this is an Abandonware game. And it's interesting because the version that I have on disc actually allows you to select whatever levels you'd like to go through. The Abandonware version, which you can find for download in places, doesn't let you choose what level you want to start at or go through. So that's one main difference between the two games. And I'm not sure what difference there they are specifically what like what version numbers, but this I actually have on disc. This is my disc-based version of the game, which miraculously, so please do not ask me how I managed to get this to work, but this is working fairly flawlessly on Windows 8 64-bit, which is I I don't know how I managed to do it, but it took over a year of <laughs> trying to figure out how to do it. But I'm recording this with DX3 which allows me to actually record the game with minimal crashes, meaning that it might crash maybe once or twice during a level and not every five steps, because the reason why I had to stop my previous Let's Play was because I had to get a new computer due to a motherboard failure, which basically what happened was the power supply fried everything, including the hard drive, so I wasn't able to get back any of my video footage, I wasn't able to do anything of that sort, so I had to get a new computer. So I was borrowing my dad's for a while, until eventually I got my own. And both computers, at the time, I was using fraps with them. It would not let me walk five steps, as I said, without it crashing. So it got to be unbearable and unplayable and unrecordable. So that's why I had to put this project on hold for the longest time, but now I'm actually feeling fairly confident and comfortable in revisiting it again. And this time, what's going to be a little bit different is the fact that there's actually going to be uh, different graphics going to be shown in this. Uh, I actually managed to get a great, uh, 3D effects glide wrapper working with this, so that you'll actually see colors with lights that you didn't see before. So, as I said, oh, excuse me, God, I nearly made it through this entire and blah, blah, blah. I'll leave up the original playthrough that I did so that you can see the difference between my commentary style and also you can see the difference between how the levels play out. So, if you're interested in seeing that, you can go and look at that. I don't really recommend it because of the fact that I was, you know, my commentary wasn't the best because I was trying to rush through the game because of the fact that I was panicking to see if it would crash or anything. But here I can kind of take it a little bit easier. So that's pretty much it. So let's start with the first level. Basically, the premise of this game, Montezuma's Return, is that you play as a guy called Max Montezuma, who crash lands on this Aztec island, and finds this temple, goes into the temple, and basically tries to have to find his way out. That's basically the basic gist of it. He has to find a way out, because his plane is destroyed. Now, I'm going to try and put all the cutscenes in the game, because the cutscenes don't work in the game normally, I actually am going to have to record them separately and put them in where they would normally work. And as I'll go through the game, I'll explain certain things in, uh, like, aspect of that. And when the game is done, I'm going to play all the videos that are in the game, one after another, and give you a little bit of, like, analysis and kind of just talk about them a little bit. But anyway, I've spent five minutes talking. Let's actually get into this, shall we? 
All right, so the temple. The temple is the first level in the entire game. I'm pretty sure if you had half a brain cell, you would actually understand that. Now, the temple is probably... It is the easiest level. And it's interesting because of the two versions of the game that I've been mentioning. The first version of the game that's Abandonware, that was released in 1997, which is kind of strange because on my disc it says 1998. This is the 1998 version of the game. In 1997 version, it actually spawns you out here. But in the 1998 version, as you saw, it spawned me in there. And those two Georges that you saw, those Aztec guys with the torches, they are the only ones with lit torches. The rest of them, their torches aren't lit. So that's just kind of something interesting for you. But yes, Max is normally supposed to fall out here and then gradually work it. Now, as you can see, that button there that I pressed closed the eye of the door. And it's pretty funny because when you walk up to the door, it closes on you to prevent you from walking in. And you can actually kind of... I wonder if you can actually... No, you can't. I don't think you can. Ah, if you time it properly, you can. But you actually have to press both of them to close it so it goes back and forth like that. But I'm sure if you time it just right, you can, you know, get through there with no hassle. Well, little hassle. You'll probably have <laughs> at least some getting through there. But yes, as you notice, I'm picking up treasures and stuff like that. That's a part of that kind of an Indiana Jones-esque important part of the game. These are eagles, but for some reason they're very colorful eagles, and they flew into each other. And surprisingly, you want to make sure that you don't get hit by their beak. Like, even if you're not paying attention to, like, not even close to their... Whoa! Oh, holy hell balls. Okay, I'm good. Um, their beak has like an instant uh, hurt thing trigger on it. So they don't even actually have to attack you. They just touch you and you get hurt. So yeah, the, one of the big differences that I want to point out is in the fr previous version, which was using VGA graphics, you don't see that color that's kind of that disco-y color kind of color going on in the room. Uh, you don't see that in the VGA version. This is a 3DFX voodoo type of thing that was available. Another thing that still doesn't pop up, like the, the orange fire here, the orange illuminating the room, that doesn't pop up in the VGA version, but in the 3DFX and um, voodoo, it does. But one thing that I do want to notice is about the skulls that you're about to see. You can kind of see it between the things there. And make sure you collect all the treasures, by the way because it gives you a bonus round at the end of every level when you do. But uh, this skull here, when you have a voodoo card, it actually has like a red dot in its eyes. But for some reason on the 3D FX glide wrapper, which again, I'm not really having a huge complaint over because of the fact that A, come on, it adds a lot of extra color to the lighting as it is anyway. I'm not too picky with about like tiny little red dots in the skull's eyes. But with the voodoo card, a voodoo card would like to actually see, like, a red little dot in the eye. Oh! That was close. Hi, George. How you doing? Good for you. So, this is a George. These guys are super simple to kill. So, like, super simple. Like, most of the enemies in this are fairly easy. The enemies don't really present much of a challenge. Ow. Much of a challenge. But they're fun to fight anyway. And when they die, they make a funny effect. <laughs> That's probably one of the most iconic parts about this game is like the puzzle solving, uh, the fact that the enemies die so funkily. Funkily? Yeah, that's a word. That's a word that I just made up, you know, because that's how I work. That's how I roll. That's how I rock and roll. And now, once you've pressed both of these buttons, it really doesn't matter because they both close again anyway. Meaning that you cannot go back through the way you once came. Which is totally awesome because you want to. No, you don't. So just make sure that you've got all the treasures coming through there. There weren't that many. But just make sure you got all got them all anyway. Because it would kind of suck if you got this part and you couldn't go back. Oh, wait a sec. Yeah, you know. So come through this left passage first because I like going left first. Because going left is a good pro tip. Kill the rat. Kill the, obsess the obscenely large rat. Note, when I'm turning left and walking forward at the same time, I cannot kick the rat. 
Damn, that sucks. Now, this rat also has a trigger pain thing at the beginning. Why are you- what are you doing? Stop it. Stop it, I say. Come- ow. Hither. Ow. See, you just touch it in the face and it hurts you. And it hurts a lot. Now these are my favorite things in the entire game. These are trample bouncies. Woo! These are trampolines. And the closest to the middle you get, the higher it bounces you, theoretically. And I love the fact that all these gems have different sound effects when you collect them. Now, if you probably noticed by the uh, amazing getup of the, 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 the heads-up display that only pops up whenever you collect treasures and stuff, is that upon doing this, the white number which is, out, is 48. I don't know what I'm doing. No, I, 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 it's 48. That means that that is how many treasures I have left to collect. Whoa. Don't do that, man. Don't do not do that. That's not nice. I'm going to kick you in the ear. I'm going to kick you... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Note that you will probably get motion sick playing this game, so focus on the rat at all times. Keep your hands and legs in the ride at all times. Actually, that would probably be a beneficial idea. So this middle door opens. The other two don't. You'll find this out when you play it yourself. And when you kill this George, it gives you an interesting effect. Ow! That most of the other enemies do not give you. Means that it basically, like, warps into that tiny stick figure guy again. With a triangle head. Ow, God. Ow, God. Why are you hitting me so bad? Boop. He pooped a diamond. Yes, those are called diamonds in this game, okay? Make sure you pay attention to that. They're not gold lead gold diamonds, but they're whoa! 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 Did I get that? I got that. Cool. That it's not normally supposed to happen, but okay. But if I do this, oh, oh, oh. okay. But yes, the white number tells you how many treasures you have left to collect. Like Francis Yay, motion sickness! Aw, that was anticlimactic. And I like how it actually placed me perfectly there. Like, perfectly perpendicular to the floor. Blong, 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 blong. I missed one, but whatever. I love that series of red jewels. Excuse me! Excuse me! Beautiful lights. You can actually come out here fast enough that it cuts off the sound of that, and you don't hear it anymore. So you think it stopped, but it didn't. It never stops just for you. So collect some bananas. Actually, you don't really need any, because there's a boss up ahead. Yeah, guess what? You don't need health for a boss coming up ahead. No, seriously, you don't. Ow! Wood does not make you go all dizzy-like. It only just makes stars come happen. But no, seriously, you actually don't need any health coming into this boss fight. Because this boss fight is actually super easy. And he's super colorful. Look at my awesome color! Now, the secret to this boss and not getting hurt at all is to stay behind this beautiful button. Ow! God! Damn. Kick him in the shorties. Kick him in the tidy whities That'll usually defeat him the fastest. Why is he wearing tidy whities Could the developers, if they ever watch this, actually answer me that question? Why is he wearing tidy whities He's not Superman. And also, why was he staying there in that one place? You know, this game has a story. I want to question it. There are so many plot devices. I don't get it. Sarcasm, sarcasm, sarcasm. No, seriously, if the, if the developers ever watch this, you guys did a phenomenal job of this game. <laughs> I know it, the development process was extremely bizarre for you and painful and painstaking and terrible, but this is probably one of my favorite games of all time because it's just so much fun. And that gem doesn't rotate very fast. And then once you collect all the gems, it gives you one of the best item pings ever. I missed one! 
we'll forget that ever happened. We'll forget that I nearly freaked out about that. But yeah, in the VGA version, this didn't light up colors. All right, we're going to go into the bonus round, and hopefully my voice doesn't mess up, because usually it does. And this game will crash after the bonus round is done, which don't ask me why, but it does. So that's, that's how it's going to go. So anyway, let's go through the bonus round and do our best to do our best with our phantasmic new high score. Perfect completion. Prepare for bonus round. All right, here we go. Collect all the treasures in the LSD trap. Yeah. The... Seriously, the bonus rounds were basically made on an LSD trip uh, because some of these bonus rounds are actually pretty challenging. Uh, they, they are, seriously. They actually can be pretty challenging. This one's easy. This one's super easy. But, uh, yeah, they, they can get to be pretty tough. As you'll see later in later levels. Two left. Yeah. Oh, nearly. Oh, there you go. Now that Mr. Polo at the bottom, that is a cheat code. So whenever you complete a bonus round, you're going to get a Windows error. Eventually. Sometime today. Oh, wow. It didn't crash. Oh, my goodness. The one time it didn't crash. Oh, my God. Okay. That's a marvel. That has never happened before. But anyway, that's that. That's it for the first part. In the second part, we're going to go with the classic way I used to play the game, and we're going to go through Lair of the Lava Lord next, all right? So, I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you would like more content like this, and I will see you guys in the next episode as we tackle the Lair of the Lava Lord. See you later!